just a few scenes around small town Texas. We got up to 100 degrees today, but by this time it had cooled down to 88 degrees. Kind of a clear sky, just not a whole lot going on. Hey, this is Tim Vasquez with the Texas Weather Update, and it has been boring. and I'm struggling to get through these last few weeks of uh, summer here. But I figure we'll take a look at the Texas NASA Polar Orbiter satellites. This is the Aqua satellite photo taken about uh, about 1 or 2 p.m. yesterday. This is, let's see, this is back on, let's see, what's today? July 30. This is on the 29th on on Wednesday. So here we have Houston, we have San Antonio right there, and Dallas-Fort Worth is up here. And you can see the usual cumulus clouds. It's pretty typical. There's a lot of Q right there, a bunch of Q here, and it's a little bit more developed in the Abilene to Wichita Falls area. See those higher cloud tops? There's some evidence of shading right in here. The elements are larger. Let me zoom in a little bit and you can really see that. So Abilene is right here, and you can see those clusters are a lot larger. So those are imminent cumulonimbus clouds about to go up and produce some showers and thunderstorms. And as we go north, we'll compare that to what we have to the south. See down here along the Red River? Look at the uh, cellular appearance of those clouds. That's typical of what we see in warm weather, kind of an open cell appearance. But if we go north into Kansas, there's more of a closed cell appearance. See this here? That's more indicative of stable air. So I'm going to put CC here for closed cell cumulus. Probably a little bit of stratocum mixed in. So that tells us that north of this line, there's more stable air. And I'll put S there and U for unstable air. So we're going to look for some sort of front in between when we go to the surface chart. And then dropping to the south, what's all this junk here? See this out in the Gulf Coast? Looks like some sort of fog or haze or mud. Well, if we zoom out, you can kind of see what's going on. See this uh, streak that goes all the way down along this, uh, this image swath? This is uh, a sun glint from the uh, satellite. This is where the sun is reflecting off the ocean surface. And you can see there's a sun glint with each swath. There's one out here, one out here. So you've got to kind of be careful with these products. Even out in the Pacific, yeah, look at that. So there's all kinds of little artifacts you kind of have to watch out for. And that's certainly what we're seeing in Texas here. So what's going on on the regular GOES geostationary satellite photo? This is about 10 a.m., you can see a little line of elevated Q in western Oklahoma. A little bit of junk off the southern Louisiana coast. And there's the Q getting started up along the Texas Gulf Coast. We'll run that up to about uh, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. You can see the cumulus start blowing up there in northwest Texas and more of it in Louisiana and eastern Texas. And there's the uh, sea breeze. This is at uh, 3 p.m., so you can see the sea breeze has not moved very far inland. In fact, we go all the way to about 6 p.m. Sea breeze is just sitting right there along Interstate 10. And in the higher terrain of Oklahoma and Texas, a little bit of cumulus getting going. There's probably a little bit of a boundary through here. You remember that boundary we talked about yesterday? It's probably stagnated out here in this region, and that's contributing to the growth we're getting out in that area. Then out to the west, just the usual monsoon flow due to the persistent southeasterly flow over many, many weeks into that region. And there's the monsoon pattern. This isn't really Texas, but it's uh, New Mexico and far eastern or far western Texas. This is at uh, 2.20 p.m. or 2.20 2 a.m. It's definitely not p.m. It's dark as heck out there. So there's a bunch of thunderstorms still persisting at this hour. If you're in Albuquerque there, you're probably getting a little bit of lightning off to the south and east. 
probably a little bit of dampness on the streets there, all the way down to Deming and El Paso and down to Lordsburg. But it looks like Arizona is kind of quiet tonight. Not a whole lot going on there. And the MCS that we had over West Texas, that's kind of shut down. We're, we don't have that kind of activity going. The stuff we had out east has dissipated after getting into this, uh, getting into the uh, post on hours. So, yeah, let me go to the surface chart here real quick. What do we have on the surface chart? Well, as usual, I've, at the bottom right of each plot, I've plotted the max temperature for today. So there's 98 right there. It uh, looks like uh, Henrietta, Texas, I guess, on that area. And if I kind of paint that out, we've got a little bit more hundreds for today. See, there's some out there in Louisiana all the way. To to Texas. <laughs> Sound, sounded like porky pig here. Texarkana all the way west and up to, I'm just going to paint this out really quick. That area of hundreds has really kind of spread, so we've probably got the high pressure centered on uh, north central Texas. So there we go, all the way out to, yeah, pretty much goes all the way out to west Texas. So there's the area of hundreds, and a little bit bigger than yesterday, but up to the north we see the northeasterly flow coming up from the Great Lakes area. Look at those cooler temperatures. There's upper 70s there. And if we kind of divide the area, 80s to the south at this hour, and low 70s to mid 70s up north, look at the winds, we can kind of paint out a little bit of a stagnant frontal boundary through this area. It's hard to tell where this is exactly because most of this out here in New Mexico, this is monsoon driven. Remember those showers that we saw on the radar out in this area? Those don't contribute to the frontal boundary itself. Those are kind of its own little deal. So we have to look at the actual air mass. And 72 with northeasterly flow differs quite a bit from 77 with very weak northeasterly flow. This is probably a little bit of outflow in this area. So the frontal boundary probably goes something like this. And with the weak cold surges we have this time of year. It's definitely not crossing the Rockies. I'd be surprised if it's getting out any further than Grand Junction and Santa Fe. And anything out here is probably outflow driven. And then as far as any dry line, well, we're not going to see much of a dry line this time of year because the southeasterly flow is so persistent that's bringing the moisture westward into far west Texas. So we're not going to really expect to find that there. So with all that in mind, what do we have for our forecast? Let's go to the GFS Global Forecast Model, and let me fix that really quick. There we go. Kind of losing that in the browser. There we go. All right, so we're starting at zero hours. This is for this evening. Got the latest run, and there's the high pressure over northeastern uh, Texas. This is at 250 millibars up at 34,000 feet. So this time of year, this is kind of like the key to what's going on. As we get into September and October, I'm going to show you a whole lot more products. So be patient. We're going to get there. We're going to start with just these little basics to kind of get us through the next four or five weeks. But there we go. We got a departing polar front jet over the Great Lakes. And if we look at the ridges and troughs, we've got a ridge to the west, see right there from West Virginia up to Quebec. And we've got kind of a larger long wave trough across the high plains of central U.S. Of course, the uh, small scale trough is going to be kind of in this area, but we're looking at the broad scale trough, so it's going to be right there. And that probably is going to be advancing over the next couple of days, and we're probably going to build this ridge in very gradually. But as far as Texas, we just got light flow here, and we always look for those easterly waves, and it looks like this time around we've probably got a bit of an easterly, easterly wave right here from the Mississippi coast all the way down to the central Gulf of Mexico. So we'll bring this forward. Um, 
It looks like that easterly wave is kind of advanced maybe to here around Louisiana by to midday tomorrow. And then by tomorrow night, you can see the high pressure is out over West Texas. Got northerly flows starting to develop in eastern Texas. Looks like that easterly wave has kind of departed. Then as we get into this weekend, we become under kind of like light northerly flow. Not a whole lot going on, really. The uh, long wave trough is out over the eastern U.S. Remember, it was here today. It's moved all the way out eastward, about a 1,000 miles or so. And there's that ridge building back in behind it. So we advance up to Monday. And now we're starting to develop that northerly flow. This is around Wednesday now. See right there? That's advancing into the areas east of I-35 and into east Texas and northeast Texas. So that's going to be kind of a change out in that area. There's the upper level ridge. Upper level trough is out over the east coast. So this means that West Texas is probably going to heat up a little bit, maybe start shutting down some of the storm activity, and that'll kind of affect mostly the central U.S. at this point during the nocturnal hours. And some of that will move into the Red River area, Oklahoma, and possibly north of I-20, I-30 during the overnight hours. Advancing into Thursday and Friday, look at this. There's, remember we talked about that tut low that kind of separated from this stuff here and drifted southeast? Now we've got a little bit of a wave associated with that. So we're going to look for probably maybe a chance of increased rain around Wednesday or Thursday in parts of Texas, maybe like the eastern half, like this area. We'll keep an eye on that. This is probably going to change quite a bit because this is 100 and 80 hours out or so. But we have that closed low starting to form in the Gulf right there. As we start to get to 240 hours by the following weekend, that's not going to affect Texas a whole lot, maybe just like mostly south of I-10. But we'll watch that in case that drifts northeast. So now we're starting to get very far out, but it looks like that high pressure area is going to back off and things will moderate in Texas. And we'll see, probably we'll start breaking out of this very hot, dry, clear weather, start to bring in some clouds and a little bit of cooler temperatures getting into the first week or two of August. That's probably about as far as I want to look right there. Anyway, that's the Texas weather forecast, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. I appreciate you checking us out. Thanks.